in the woods Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, out here at the Pathfinder School classroom area. I wanted to go over a video with you today about a tool that has been around since Egyptian times. It's very common man priced, very easily found, yet we seem to forget about them every day when we do our bushcrafting and our work in the woods for longer term self-reliance. And that is the bow saw. Bow saw, buck saw, swede saw, they're all synonymous for a saw blade that has a frame around it. There are drawings and photographs from museums of bow saws, basically made in the same fashion they are today, except that it had a hoop of wood and the blade had two iron collars on it that the hoop was put into and that gave you that bow frame with a saw blade underneath and that came from the Egyptian period. So these are very, very old. There were saw companies in the 18th century that that's all they did was manufacture saws both in London and in the US for the building trades. So they've been around for a long time. Advantages to a saw like this are, number one, it takes a lot less energy to run this saw than it does an ax. You can do it a lot more safely than you can swing an ax, and it takes a lot less skill to manipulate a saw than it does an ax. Now, a saw is not gonna do all the things for you an ax will do, but if you have an ax and a saw, then you have a win-win situation because you can do everything from you know, making campfire to building a log cabin if you have those two implements. And it has been done with basically just those two implements. So it can be done. I wouldn't want to attempt it. I wouldn't want to spend the calories and energy to do it if I had modern tools, but it could be done if you had to. Now, let me talk about these saws for just a minute. These are two of these that are mine. This one I usually keep on my four-wheeler, and it is about a 16, 18-inch blade. This is the one that I use when I stuff it in the back of my backpack where my trash can is inside my can. And this one is a 12 inch saw. These saws are limited as far as how big a tree you can process or cut down with them by the space between the blade and the frame. There's a lot of these on the market now that are folding type gizmos that have an angular frame on them that basically forms a triangle. The problem with that is you have about this much space that you can actually cut a tree this big around. Then you're short stroking the thing all day long, blowing calories when you could just be using the whole length of the blade. So unless you've got that full bow on the saw, you're really wasting a lot of energy with a folding type saw. The smaller ones like this that are about 12 inches, you can buy hacksaw blades for them as well to make them even more multifunctional. So you can use them to process carcasses to saw through bone and things like that. And then you can also put the bigger blade on them obviously for trees. But something like this that slides down the back of your pack frame does not take up much room, it hardly weighs a thing, and it does a lot for you. I would take one of these over a handsaw if I had a choice every day of the week because this is gonna do a lot more for you than a handsaw. If you're carrying a multi-tool that already has a small saw blade on it that's robust like a Leatherman, then you carry something like this and an ax, you got just about everything you need. Now, you can't take this over an ax. An ax is gonna do too much for you that this won't do. But if you've got the option to carry a little extra weight, I would take this with me as well as an axe to save myself calories, to be more safe, especially during operations in close quarters or operating at night, a saw is much safer than an axe. I'm going to show you the proper way to use a bow saw to saw a log and process wood here right now, so stay with me. Okay, so what we got here is we've got about a three and a half inch piece of pine. We've got it on a tripod, we're wearing gloves. If we were doing anything above our head like limbing, or something like that before we felled a tree, then we'd want to have safety glasses on as well. The proper way to use a saw like this is to put the saw on the material and put your hand inside the saw. That keeps you from hitting anything. Spread your legs out so that saw can't come down on your legs. Let the weight of that saw do the work for you. You can push down a little bit with your wrist once you get the kerf going and once you get used to using the saw, but you always want this end that you're cutting off or your end that's out here in the air. You want that, this is the usable piece, okay, or this may be the waste piece. It doesn't really matter, but this piece right here is going to fall. This piece is shorter than this one, so this one has less weight. I don't want to put this saw in a bind by hanging this thing up. So what I need to do is I need to have this out here so that it starts to fall free and will separate the kerf as it goes.
This takes a lot less energy. I'm really letting the saw do all of the work. And this pine is wet, by the way. I'm taking full strokes on the saw all the way to my wrist. I'm letting that thing hit my wrist every time. And I'm hitting my wrist going the other direction. Now it takes a little longer maybe with an a with than that, with the saw with, than it would with an ax, but it's a whole lot safer. Then I can just move up. If I'm processing firewood, I can move that log up and start to cut another piece. If I'm making a ridge pole, which this piece is plenty big enough for that, if I'm making a ridge pole, same thing. I cut off my waist end, let it fall and hit the ground, and go from there, okay? So these type saws are very, very handy. The bow saw, the buck saw, the swede saw, they're all, all the names are synonymous, like I said, but you can pick one of these up at any hardware store, really for about less than 10 bucks. And I think this one right here, the smaller one, I probably even paid less than that for at some hardware store or flea market. You can find them very easy. You can find replacement blades. Remember when you put this in your pack, you should have some type of cover for the blade so it doesn't cut anything in your pack or cut you going in or out. Okay guys, well, that was just a really short video on the use of the bow saw, what bow saws are, how long they've been around and how much they've been used. And you know, I'm a big believer, my 21st century long hunter mentality tells me that if something's been around for thousands of years and it still works today as well as it worked a thousand years ago, why are we still not using it? Obviously the only thing better than that's gonna be a chainsaw and you're not gonna have one of those in your backpack. So something like a bow saw, I'm gonna carry. Now I have read different places that wooden frame buck saws, they call them, and I've shown a video how to make one of those in the woods. You can make a buck saw that collapses pretty well. It's got a nice wide frame on it. The problem is it's very hard to get a buck saw to be stable enough to put enough pressure on that blade to really make it a good bulletproof saw. These metal frames, you're not gonna destroy these things. And if you wanted this thing to be multifunctional, like I said, you can get a hacksaw blade for this thing. And if you had to make a bow drill fire, there you go. String your cordage right between that thing, take the blade out, and you've got your bow right there for your bow drill fire. So it's a multifunctional thing that you can carry. I guarantee you that thing doesn't weigh much over a pound if it weighs that much. The heaviest part is the snap on the backside where the grip is that tightens up that blade. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for another video. I hope you enjoyed this. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything that you do for me, for my school, and for my family. I'll be back to the video as soon as I can.